Hey everybody, welcome to the Insights Podcast presented by Vantage Pro. Uh, I am Duke, all the way on the other side. Oh, hey, you got it right. And uh, <laughs> my co-host. And in the middle, a, uh, a good friend of ours. He's uh, been a friend for many, many years. Uh, been around this industry for at least three or four years, I think. Uh, but our good friend, Don Boomer, a senior applications engineer at RFNU. Basically, he just knows stuff. That's... He kind of knows stuff, but yeah. Don, yeah, well, when you, when you've hung around as long as I have, I, I've been around since the earth was cooling. So yeah, <laughs> sooner, sooner or later, you know, you've, you've seen most of this stuff. I tell, I tell people younger than me, I said, you know, I, I started in this business, you know, when it was in black and white. So when we, every, every, when the world was in black yeah. and white, you know, there you go. I bet yeah. the, uh, I bet the RF spectrum was a little easier when the earth was cooling. Hey, it's Van. I'm just going to jump in here for a quick second and ask you that if you like this content, please leave a thumbs up, please subscribe, click that notification bell and share this out on the socials if you can. And one more thing, leave a comment. We absolutely read them and we will respond to them. All right, back to the podcast. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's the problem anymore is everything you know from the past is fine. <laughs> But you're trying to work in an environment that's becoming extremely hostile, and if yeah. you're in a if you're in a metropolitan area, you likely have maybe six percent of the available band uh, width that you had um, five or ten years ago. So you you really can't make any mistakes, and you don't want to make any stupid mistakes um, and and give away anything because you're pretty much going to need everything you can get. So. Right. So that's a, that's a fun little kickoff into what we're going to be talking about today. So uh, for those of you guys who don't know RF Venue, um, they are uh, an independent manufacturer of, uh, and I say independent, mean, meaning they're not owned by one of the wireless uh, mic companies out there. Um, but, but probably some of the most robust and uh, <clears throat> certainly the most effective uh, antenna distribution uh, and paraphernalia of wireless microphones. Like they basically just make all the stuff that make your wireless work uh, and have for years used by, um, gosh, everybody from, I mean, a lot of the big tours are using RF venue, certainly uh, a lot of churches and, and stadiums and theaters. I mean, you guys have kind of become a, really almost the de facto default of RF management. Yeah, when we, I think we look back at this last fall and uh, we now have over 20,000 installations. So, yeah. Wow. We, we, we've, we've screwed a couple of these into some racks, rent some wire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the well, crazy thing about it is that, it, that, you know, people don't, people say this flippantly about a lot of gear, but the truth of the matter is, um, at least our, our, our um, ex experience with our venue has been you put it in, it works. It, yeah. it does exactly what you say. It's, it's one of our favorite do. things. Yeah. And, and yeah, it's, it's, it's one of the things that we have to think about the least. Well, you put our, our venue system in, oh, your wireless is just, it's just going to work. Yeah. And if well, it's a it's problem with the wireless, system. it's usually the wireless's fault. <laughs> yeah. Well, we try to build some smarts in our stuff that are just make it plug and play. So you don't have to, you don't particularly have to know anything, although certainly hurts or doesn't hurt to understand this, you know, cause we're dealing with stuff that's invisible. So, you know, I get that all the time, but, um, yeah, I mean, just, uh, we, we just, we make aftermarket stuff that just goes beyond what you could get from everybody else. And that's why we started building it. So we saw this yeah. need coming way back. It's been a long time to get to where we are now in the RF spectrum. Um, but uh, yeah, we saw this coming, you know, 20 years ago. And so we started making products uh, to solve particular problems. Well, you started kind of talking about this, um, but uh, before we get into actual best practices and problem solving and those kinds of things, talk to us a little bit about what you have seen in the last, you know, five to 20 years or so in RF, because it, it has changed a lot. Well, uh, I mean, two things. Number one, everybody loves wireless everything, wireless microphones. We have lots and lots and lots more of them than we used to. Um, right. They, 
they sound real good. You should be able to make them work anywhere. Uh, you know, they're, they're, they work. Uh, I just sometimes have to, you know, uh, set things up right. Um, but, you know, I mean, I, th this really is basically all because cell phones have eaten up all the bandwidth. And, you know, I don't know how many. Last time I checked, there was like, you know, almost 400 million cell phones in this country. Uh, and there's probably something on the order of about 3 million wireless microphones. So, you know, I mean, everybody's got a cell phone. Five-year-old kids have cell phones now. So <laughs> they, there's only so many cars you can put on the freeway at a time. And they're using up most of the band that we used to have available for wireless mics. And yeah. therefore, they keep crowding us into smaller and smaller chunks. And... Um, you know that, so that makes it. You you have to you have to do all the best practices. You don't want to give anything away. Yeah, well, we've gone through various repacks now in the last what fifteen years now has it been? Mm -hmm. And they they do keep squeezing us. Um, and you know they 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 like to say it's for good reasons, like emergency management systems and those. But I mean, a lot of it's money. It's money, yeah. Yeah, the government figured out they were losing fifty billion dollars in licensing fees that the that the cell phone providers would pay twenty seven times as much for a license right. as the over over the air TV guys were paying. So they said, "No, well, that's that's easy to figure out. There's a lot of money we're we're leaving on the table." So they they keep selling off chunks of the TV band, which is probably fine because. You know, fewer and fewer and fewer people actually have over-the-air television anymore. Everybody pretty much streams everything. So, um, you know, the the demand for over-the-air television is is dropping, and so we can use that band. We can repurpose that band, and we all love our cell phones, right? I'm not, I'm not giving mine up. So, gotta have gotta have some place to to run them, and and as they do bigger and better things it needs they need more bandwidth to do that so you know you've got to give them some space yeah but, uh, right. yeah they, they've left a little for us and um you know we're seeing smarter and smarter the the new the new uh, generations of wireless microphones are much better than they were five or ten years ago um yeah. you know unfortunately they cost more money partially because they're better so the fcc made some additional requirements that they had to use less bandwidth so they had to build the radios better and you know obviously that comes with a cost so that's you know yeah. in addition to inflation just the i mean the the microphones are better and they cost more yeah so what we what we see in so many uh churches especially um but it's true in theaters and other venues as well uh you know we usually see I don't know, eight to eight to 12 channels of wireless mics, maybe another eight channels of uh, in-ears in the sanctuary or in the main auditorium. Mm -hmm. And of course you mm -hmm. get into these kids rooms and the classrooms and all these, and you get, you know, two or three mics here, two or three mics there. Um, <clears throat> and I think probably the most common thing I see in most venues is something doesn't work some of the times. <laughs> <laughs> like you get well, in there and I had this conversation the other day. It's like, man, these, every time I come in to test these wireless mics, they're fine. But then when we get to Wednesday night or Sunday morning or whatever, they like the, the kid's room doesn't work anymore. It just sounds weird. So somebody, somebody pointed something out to me that I just, just went over my head until they did. It's just like, if your wireless microphone works 99.9% .9 of the time perfectly, that's four seconds of dead air you have every hour. <laughs> That's too much. I, I mean, what? My car doesn't work 99 point. What works 99.9% .9 perfectly? But if your wireless mic drops four seconds every hour, uh, that doesn't work for me. <laughs> so I can actually say that the wireless mic is the closest thing to a church technical person, dude. Um, one of our friends, Dennis Choi, once said that the tech, the tech staff in a church, the tech team in a church has to bat a thousand, has to bat a thousand every service. It's the only, it's the only, um, it's the only team in the entire church that has to bat a thousand in every service. 
Well, if you've ever sat back in the mixing booth and had something go wrong and had everybody turn in the pews and look at you, uh, exactly. you know you don't want to do that twice, right? Exactly. So, yeah. yeah. And, and that's, you know, that's happened to all of us. Uh, but, you know, like I said, don't let the same dog bite you twice. So you figure out why that happened and you don't let that happen again. Exactly. Well, and that's why we thought we'd have you on. We know you, uh, you guys at our thing, you do a lot of webinars and stuff uh, to to help kind of crusade uh, good RF practices. But we thought, yeah, let's let's try another another avenue here. Let's have you on and let's talk about some of these best uh, wireless RF management practices because there's a lot of folks out there that just don't know. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, so if we want to talk about antenna distribution. It may seem like an added expense, but it's really a it's it's a crucial investment for anybody that has a few wireless microphones and a, a desire to have reliable performance with minimum complications. Right. It just do you have to have it? No, but we'd like to make it better than that. Ninety nine point nine per ninety nine point six or ninety seven percent that you may be having otherwise by by not uh, by not doing this so um that's that's really why you want to do it where it, it's it's insurance for those couple of seconds here and there that drop out in the middle it just drives everybody crazy so that's that's what we're trying to do here is just ensure yeah. that you're on the air the whole time well we've talked about this over the years your your wireless mics are usually used by you know, your, your lead speaker, your lead pastor, your worship leaders, your band leaders, like it's 90% of your 95% of your service, your, your event, your whatever is probably being led from a wireless mic. So getting that yeah. right, it's important. Yeah. That's not okay. the thing that can drop. So and there, can you walk are a lot of, yeah, I think the market's being flooded with um, a lot of knockoff wireless antenna distribution stuff. You see a lot of it on Amazon, you see it, whatever. And it may look like the more expensive stuff, but I can't tell you how many calls we get to where we bought this X brand off of Amazon for the whole system was $150. And we just have lots and lots of problems with our RF. And I don't understand. They say it's just like the big manufacturers. Well, we go you'd to, yeah. be surprised when you manufacture rf products the screws you use in the chassis the paint you use to paint your name on the front these things affect the rf performance i mean who would have thought right not not yeah. only the circuitry take the whole circuitry and move it over an eighth of an inch and the whole thing goes south i mean it's it's rf is is because we're dealing with extremely high frequencies it's it's very 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 exacting all it's all the same rules that your audio is but your audio is doing 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz and we're up in the 500 million hertz range so things become critical very quickly yeah so can you walk us through some best practices um you know all the way from kind of large systems to small systems um what what are some of the things that we should be always doing uh, to make sure that we we have good RF and, and we're not having dropouts. So, so the, the the there is a single point. There is a single thing that you have to do to make your system reliable. There's 87 ways to diminish that single thing, but you have to understand what it is that keeps you on the air. And what keeps you on the air is your ability to get the signal from your transmitter through the air into your antenna down the coax, into the electronics, down the coax, into the receiver. Okay, that's the signal path. When it gets there, the signal from your transmitter needs to be at least 20 dB stronger than whatever the residual background RF is where you are, and that's different every place. And when that happens, radios get something called capture effect. So until you have that much level, your antenna, whatever it is, is literally, picking up every single radio that's being transmitted on the planet, right? You're picking up wireless mics from China uh, and CB radios from Australia and television stations from England. They're all going into that antenna and your receiver has the job of trying to figure out which one it's supposed to do. 
So when the signal is 20 dB, in other words, 100 times stronger than whatever all the rest of that garbage is, your radio locks to that single frequency and turns off everything else. Not like your microphone, right? If you have, you got your microphone on stage, I'm, I'm singing into it, that's fine. If the drummer starts playing behind me, that's going to leak into my mic. And what's going to come out the PA is vocals and, and drums, right? In a radio, well, that's going to happen to the microphone part. But in a radio, what's happening is every radio station in the world is going into it. And it's going to throw all of them away except that one. And when you have capture effect, you're locked. And you have 100% coverage. You're not going to you're not going to go off the air, uh, you know, unless you walk behind a wall. I mean, there's ways to do that. But as long as you got line of sight, um, you're good to go. So as long as you maintain that 20. So everything we do is a step to to take a straw off the camel's back and maintain that 20. Um, and so that's that's pr what distribution is about. I mean, there's. In, in in the performance terms, what we're doing is we want to get rid of antennas. Antennas interfere with each other. So until they're about six feet apart from each other, because what happens when a radio wave crosses through an antenna, it generates a current, goes down the wire into the radio, and we got sound. Okay. But when that current flows through the conductor, that's the antenna, it generates a magnetic field. And so if your antenna is closer than about three wavelengths, which is roughly six feet, that magnetism jumps into the other antenna where it becomes noise and it raises up that noise floor that we're trying so hard to stay above. So that's the first thing we want to get in, in a, you know, it depends, but I'm going to say in a room that would hold like a thousand or 1500 people size of a room, maybe twice that big, but something like that. You really want to have one A and one B antenna. Adding extra antennas is going backwards. So but I'll, that's I'll what it this, is. I, I think it's but, worth, I think it's worth repeating multiple antennas in close proximity is often the problem because this is I, what I see that happens often in uh, like kids' rooms or like little fellowship halls, coffee shops, those kinds of things. You know, we'll rack two or four channels of wireless all with the little, you know, half waves in the back of the rack. So it's already in a rack, under a table, under a thing, whatever, back behind. But you've got all of these antennas all within not even six feet. They're all within like, you know, 12 inches. Yeah. And or if they're in a rack, they're two inches out. apart. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. And people are getting dropouts so get and they can't figure it out. Yeah, so you get that magnetic interference. That's one thing. But the second thing that happens when you stack uh, antennas close together, you create arrays, right? We all know about line array speakers. We stack a bunch of speakers tall and we get pattern control. Well, that's how we that's how we get patterns in antenna. But it's all mathematically worked out in the distances or precision. When you just stick a bunch of antennas, when you've got an antenna farm, or you stack four or five receivers on your desk, what happens is it changes the shape of the pickup of those antennas. And it does it, I mean, it can be figured out mathematically, but you know, you've got a bunch stacked on your desk, that's not gonna happen. What happens when, when you get that is you get hot and cold spots on your stage. So you, as you're walking, you know, left to right, you, you may be dropping out and then coming back and drop, you know, it, it's a complicated dance. But that's that's a factor as well. And then the other thing that people uh, are surprised to learn. But so when the when the radio wave hits the antenna and goes down into the radio, the radio pushes some of it back out the out the antenna input and actually back to the antenna. About 10 percent of the energy gets bounced back out of the radio. And it, so your antenna, while it's receiving, is rebroadcasting. And again, if that antenna is right next to another antenna, it's sort of screaming in its ear, right? Hmm. That's it's adding more noise. So, it, like I said, everything's going back to keeping that 20 dB minimum dynamic range, and that's chewing away at it a little bit. So, everything that we can do that takes a straw off the camel's back. I mean, you know, the the other thing about antenna distribution right away is um, you can use remote antennas. So you can buy better antennas and 
you'd really like to, in almost every case, I mean, I can only speak generally, but in almost every case, directional antennas using a paddle of some kind uh, is, is greatly preferred to using a whip because the whip is, is omnidirectional. It's picking up everything in 360 degrees. Well, if you're in the back of the room, you only want to pick up the stage. You don't, probably, I mean, you don't want to pick up what's behind you, right? So even if there's nothing there, what is there is some RF interference. So right. when you use whip, when you use whip antennas, the noise floor that we're trying to be 20 dB above is always higher than when you use directional antennas. So, uh, and then the other thing, of course, is you're, you're isolated. So you can move the antennas closer to the performers, closer to the transmitters, and therefore you get a stronger signal. So your signal's rising above the noise floor better as well when you do that. Um, you don't always have to do that, but that, that improves things. Um, and I and think then, that's, of course, good. that's a great point because what I often see, you know, sometimes uh, uh, venues will put in um, antenna distribution and a directional antenna uh, or, you know, an integrator like us would do that in their main, main space. But then you mm -hmm. get to the kid spaces and, yeah, again, you're just stacking wireless systems with the little, the little short guys in, in the rack. The fact that they're omnidirectional and the fact that you've often got two, three, four of these little rooms kind of spread out in a little chunk, like they're almost actually interfering more with each other just because, again, omnidirectional pickup, you're getting no kind of, uh, uh, you're not just going, no, I just want these. I just want these. And so antenna distribution in in those spaces and, and really placement of antenna and type of antenna are almost more critical in those spaces than they are in the big room that's kind of far away from everything else. Yeah, well, the other thing people don't think about is when you have whip antennas don't like to be up against walls. Right. So if you're all the way in the back in the sound booth, you've got a wall right behind you. Just imagine it's, imagine it's an omni microphone. You're going to get lots of echoes off that back wall that's going to that's going to dilute your main signal. Right. So, no, that makes sense, too. Um, omnis, omnis, omnis are fine if you can mount them in the middle of what you're doing. Uh, that's the where they're supposed to be. So, you know, if we're doing a football field, if you're putting it on the 50 yard line, that's good. If I'm putting it under the end zone, I'm still picking yeah. up the football field. But unfortunately, I'm picking up the parking lot on the other side of the football field. And I don't want that because that's garbage I've got to I've got to overcome. Right. Mm -hmm. So with a directional antenna, I just pick up the direction I'm shooting it. Same way you use a cardioid microphone for almost yeah. everything. Yeah, so we've talked about getting rid of it. Oh, go ahead, man. I was just going to say I can't I can't tell you how many times I've walked into places where they've had had you know 10 or 15 microphones receivers and they've been all sitting on a table all stacked on top right. of each other with the antennas all touching each other shoved up against the wall. It's like yeah. all all yeah. the things you shouldn't do are all done and then they they don't understand why everything doesn't work. Yeah. Well, uh, again, as long as you as long as you maintain that 20 db you can do all kinds of things wrong and you probably have more than that 20 db till you step over a foot and it drops right there see right so as you're walking across your stage it's coming and going and so um so it's fine most of the time but we want it to be great all of the time um, but i think some of that's going to depend on what market you're in too because like for me in kansas city we have a lot more uh, RF grace than Van and and folks in Southern California do. Um, I know we've we've got a church we work with that's just outside of LA County, and at one point when we first started talking to them, it was uh, yeah we want twelve uh, in ear systems, and we started looking at just just the available spectrum in Los Angeles County, and we went you can have ten maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well. Maybe. That's yeah, we got to share it. We got to share what there is. Um, but, you know, you've got some other things in your church now that are causing you grief that you may not know about. Um, if you have big video monitors, those generate RF in the same place we're trying to use wireless mics. So even though you don't have TV stations and the other thing that's even more insidious um, are those T-Mobile pink lightning bolts. Right. So everybody that's sitting in your congregation that's got a T-Mobile phone in their pocket. And, you know, I assume Sunday morning they're not talking on their phone during the sermon, right? 
However, if they come back and sit in the same seat on Saturday and they're there for a wedding, you can be sure that half the moms are holding up the phone streaming video to grandma somewhere else in the world, right? So at that time, they're putting a ton of data into that system. They're creating more, even more interference. And so however many 5G phones we got this week, we're going to have more next week. So at some point, this is going to catch up with you. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to make your system so overly stable that when something happens out of your control, you know, like the group that came in to visit this week and they brought their guitars, but they didn't tell you they got guitar wirelesses. They turn them on and completely screwed up your coordination, right? You don't know about it until 30 seconds before it happens. So, you know, having, having more than you need, having, you know, a little extra gas in the tank there um, will save you from those kind of problems. And that's, that's what we're doing. Cause like I said, you know, there's a certain circumstances you could stick a coat hanger in the back of your radio and it would work. Not very much anymore, but <laughs> yeah, right. But right. but that could happen, you know. So it's just, but it's not reliable, and that's what we want because, you know, how many how many words do we got to lose in an hour before nobody can understand right. what God said? So that well, we we were we were at we have a church that it turned out they were having problems with their PSM three hundreds. And it turned out that um, it was the uh, knockoff Motorola radios that their parking lot team used. And every yeah. time they would key, every time somebody would key one of those radios, it would actually jump into the to the PSM three hundred system just for a split second, and oh, the yeah. whole system would just drop out and then come back come back up. Yeah, yeah, or if they walk inside and get anywhere near your antennas and key those babies, you're going to know about it. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's, that's a, that's a problem. There are filters that can block that, but that's a different story. One more thing I well, want to say about, about distribution, um, too, is, uh, so, so having a rack and having, you know, dozen antennas in it is definitely not a good thing. You're throwing away a lot of performance, but even worse is if you've got your in-ear monitor transmitters and your wireless microphone receivers in the same rack. Right, because one's pitching and one's catching, and so <laughs> when it's close, the, you know the transmitters are screaming out power. You're supposed to be, you know, ten or fifteen feet away from an antenna, and when you're only like six inches away, you're going to overdrive the front end of your wireless microphones, and you're going to make them terribly unreliable. So you, 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 that's if you don't have distribution. So I should say because I get questions. Distribution, distros are for wireless mics. That takes an antenna in and splits it out to a bunch of radios. Combiners is what you use within your monitors. They combine a bunch of transmitters and resolve it to a single antenna. So no, you can't buy, you can't buy an eight channel distro, use four channels for microphones and four channels for ears. It doesn't work like that. They're, they're going opposite directions. And right? we've so, seen people try to do that too. So. Well, I've had people try to do it and, and, you know, they're always shocked when that happens. Cause it kind of seems, you know, it kind of seems like the same word, but that would be like trying to stick your, your, your loudspeaker to the input of your mixer and your microphone to the output of your power amp. It doesn't go that right. way. It goes the other way. Yeah, so the, principle, the principle of how it works is the same, right. but how it's actually working is not the same. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's data flow, so you, right? Yeah. Yeah. So if you've got to put all the stuff in the same rack, you need to, at a minimum, either, either combine the inner transmitters and run them out to a single antenna, or combine the wireless microphones and run those out to an A and a B antenna. Yeah, so I want to get in. I don't care you that the receivers, I don't care that the, the rack units are all together. That makes almost no difference. But if the antennas are together, that's what we got to worry right. about. So to kind of recap, because you guys have some specialty stuff, and I think it's worth, um, Don, if you'll if you'll uh, hang out and, and do another episode with us, I want to talk about some of the, because you guys have some really unique troubleshooting and, and kind of some things to go crazy when you have a really tough RF. But just RF Basics 101, what, what I've heard today is as few antennas as humanly possible. Mm-hmm. 
um, which usually means then, you know, uh, combining or distributing your, your units all into one set of antennas, if, if at all possible. Um, splitting those antennas, uh, the IEMs versus, uh, again, inflow versus outflow. So wireless mics somewhere and, and, and IEMs somewhere else. A lot of times we're on opposite sides of the stage, you know, for those antennas. Um, close proximity is, is an advantage I heard, right? We want to keep our antennas yep. as close as possible. Um, and then, uh, uh, getting directional as, as directional as you can, uh, when appropriate. Mm -hmm. Anything else as far as just, just best practices? Well, if you, if you think about it, you just described exactly the best way to position your microphone for a singer, right? It's exactly the same. Uh, and everybody pretty well understands that, but they get to they get to radio and they think it's different. But it's no, that's it. Yeah. I mean, you, you want to get your microphone close to the singer. You want to point your microphone at the singer. Uh, you know, you, you you don't want to put sixteen microphones up there to pick up one singer. It, it it's going to sound like you're talking through a, a paper tube. And you know, the same thing happens with the radio. So the the rules are the same. The physics is the same. It's just that at super high frequencies. Uh, things get critical very quickly so that you can get away with you, you can get away with all kinds of stuff down in the audio range that no chance at all in the radio range uh, but yeah that's i mean you you just that that's it you, you covered it just um um you know try to try to follow all the best practices we have some we have some free online tools if you go to our website rfvenue.com there's a button at the top that says performance tools. They're online. You don't download anything. It doesn't collect any information. Um, there's there's one that'll tell you what microphones you should buy for your location, your exact street location. And if you already have them, it tells you what channels you should probably tune them to. And then there's another one called the performance calculator that, um, so people ask me, how far will this antenna go? Or how far will this mic transmitter? How? It's interdependent on about six things so uh so what this does this this other performance calculator does what's called a link budget and so you just drop down on these boxes you tell me what brand of mic you got tell me how long the cable is tell me what antenna you're using two or three other things and then you just hit calculate if you get a green light it means that all that gear is going to operate and give you a signal 20 db above the noise floor that's what we're looking that's to awesome. do. So that's, yeah, we'll that's sure free and easy. You can do it from your phone, your computer, your tablet. It's just an online web app and it's free. Yeah. That's awesome. We'll make sure we link those in the, uh, the notes below here. Um, yeah, and it works with other guys stuff too. We'd like you to buy our own, but you know, we're just, we're happy getting it to work. Um, that's what we want to do. So. Well, I think that's why you guys have a lot of loyal followers out there because you guys have always been fairly agnostic and, and more crusaders of good RF than anything else. So, yeah. Yeah. Very, very cool. Yeah. And it, it is, I think it's great to be able, like for us, it's great that you guys have so many resources that we can direct our customers to and just people that call us randomly. I mean, Duke and I get tons of wireless questions all the time. And wireless is the bane of a <laughs> technical person's existence a lot of times um you know uh it's it's definitely gotten a lot better and i would credit you guys for helping that a lot um you know we went obviously you know when you guys you guys, you obviously remember this when we we were ha when when the government was taking away all the uh frequency ranges but churches and people were still using them as long as they possibly could. And then they didn't understand why they didn't work anymore, but they still, you know, I absolutely, I absolutely had a church say, well, we only use them once a year. I'm like, well, that doesn't matter, <laughs> you know? And so it's just, it's been, it's been quite the road, of, yeah. uh, but you guys have, you guys have, have really helped like from, from our point of view, you guys have helped us out tremendously because it's a lot less frustrating now than it was even like five years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, five or 10 years ago, you pretty much just took radios out of the box, plugged all the stuff together and turned them on and they all worked. You know, I mean, they just did. That's what happened. And now, yeah. you know, especially if you're in a metropolitan area and, you know, I got to 
So I used to always say, if you were on top of a mountain in Idaho, you don't have nothing to worry about. That's no longer true because there's a whole lot of other things that are happening in rural zones. Microsoft yep. has this um, this white space project and they're doing uh, broadband Wi-Fi. So if you live you know, 20 miles out of town, nobody's gonna pay to have fiber run out to their house. So if you wanna have high speed internet, you know, you're stuck with dial up. Uh, and, and so this new Microsoft thing uh, transmits in the same frequencies we're trying to use our wireless mics. It transmits point to point and then it's converted to Wi-Fi. And so you get, it's slick. And they're on in 18 states right now. And they're on in rural areas. That's exactly where they wanna be, the spots that can't get yeah. internet. Um, and so as, that, as more and more and more of that happens, it's competing with that same, you know, with those lanes on the freeway that your wireless mics are trying to use. So, right. you know, there will well, be some new technologies, but they're a ways off still. And I, I think, I think uh, if you're, you're willing, we're, we're going to stay on and we're going to actually record another episode because I think uh, sometimes you can follow all these best practices and you can still have issues and there's, uh, there's tools for that. And I want to talk about some of those more. So, okay, uh, Don, basics of wireless, basics of RF, man, this is good stuff. This is stuff a lot of people need to know. So. Uh, very appreciative of you uh, hanging out with us. You bet. Happy to help. Very, very cool. Well, uh, like, subscribe, all the things uh, down below. And uh, we, we just appreciate uh, getting to bring you this good content. And uh, if you've got other things that you'd like to hear uh, from, uh, whether it's uh, industry experts like Don or uh, other technical directors like yourself, just uh, throw those things down in the notes. We definitely want to hear from you guys. And, we want to keep throwing out uh, helpful, useful content for you. Yep. So then we'll see you later.